Luca. All right, I passed the first test. I didn't trip up the stairs. All right, good evening, survivors, caregivers, patients, supporters, and volunteers. It is a great honor to be up here in front of you tonight giving the speech at this year's Hamden North Haven Relay for Life Walk. To me, Relay is a chance for me to give back my time and my energy in support of a noble cause, and that is the tireless effort that we all endeavor to find a cure for cancer. I know to each one of you out there, cancer has touched your life in one form or another. One form or another. You may have had a loved one that was diagnosed with cancer or know somebody that was diagnosed. It is my hope that after hearing my story and how I decided to fight back against cancer and live the rest of my life, that you will leave here tonight knowing that you are not alone in this fight. All right, so my journey started way back in May of 2000. It was the Saturday before Mother's Day. And I decided to go to the West Haven VA Medical Center because I was experiencing some groin pain. I did not think anything of it at the time. I mean, why should I? I was 24 years old, I was playing college baseball. I was like, ah, eh, it's just, you know, I've worked out a little too hard. Eight hours later, I got the news that will forever change my life and my outlook. I know there are people out there that hear the words, you have cancer, and will immediately shut down and go into denial. Although the doctors reassured me that testicular cancer was a very common form of cancer for men my age, and that with treatment, I would make a full recovery. For me, I remember thinking, cancer, I'm like, all right, you know, it's like any other illness. They'll treat it and I'll be fine. I had surgery to remove the cancerous testicle followed up by six months of chemotherapy. After surgery, I was going, I still was going out at night singing karaoke, which gave me something to look forward to. And for those of you that sing karaoke, and I know you're out there, you know what I'm talking about. So I decided to start singing a song that really meant a lot to me. It was that song, you know, I'm half the man I used to be. <laughs> So now, as many survivors know, we seem to remember the toxic chemo drugs that we were given even decades later. And for me, that was no, I was no exception. I was given a chemotherapy regimen of bleomycin, atopicide, and cisplatinum. I had spent the summer with no hair, jaundiced skin, and oftentimes a lethargic attitude. Not to mention, it felt like I was chewing on quarters all day long. I guess it was my military training, or it could have been my Italian heritage. But somewhere during all of this, I was just too stubborn to let it stop me from living my life. I had informed the doctors that I did not want to have a port placed in my chest as it was going to prevent me from playing baseball and softball that summer. So I would alternate arms, first left and right for my treatments so that I could still be active. Fast forward to that October, I was 50 pounds heavier. For those of you that went through chemotherapy, you know they give us steroids, so let's hear it for the steroids. <laughs> I had one last and albeit large surgery to remove the scar tissue and possible tumors from my lymph nodes. I was now officially in remission from testicular cancer. I had spent the past 15 years free and clear and I'd managed to support Relay for Life during my college years. My life moved on. I went out and got married in 2010. And it was at this time that in my life that my mom was diagnosed with lung cancer. I tried to keep her upbeat and to tell her to just to wake up every morning and do the very best you could for that day. I believed in the motto that no one is guaranteed tomorrow and we should all give 100% of ourselves for today. Unfortunately, my mother lost her battle with cancer on November 19th, 2011 at the age of 57. She was just 10, day, 10 days shy of her 58th birthday. The interesting thing was the Wednesday before she passed, I had go to visit her in hospice and informed her that she was gonna be a grandmother again. She passed on knowing that I was going to have a family. On June 26, 2012, my daughter Gabriella Olivia DeLuca was born, or as my family likes to call her, God. <laughs> now, as many men out there know, we pack on the pounds when our spouses are pregnant. I was also no exception to this rule, and I had ballooned up to 250 pounds, my all-time heaviest. In October of 2013, it was made clear to me that if I wanted to be around to see my daughter grow up, that I kind of needed to start eating healthy and working out a little bit. So again, that Italian stubbornness kicked in and I spent the next 18 months working out, going to the gym six days a week. And then I had gotten down to 163 pounds. 
So I thought to myself, hey, you know, life has finally started to look up for me. I was the lightest I had been since high school. I had a family and a beautiful daughter. Well, we all know that life can be a real pain, and just when you think everything's going up, she throws you a curveball. October 2014, after losing almost 80 pounds, I started to notice that I had tailbone pain. So I was like, okay, go to the doctor. I'm about to be 40. Let's get an annual physical. X-rays showed nothing wrong with my tailbone, and life had moved on for a few more months. In January of 2015, the pain had gotten no better, no worse. So I made a follow-up with my doctor, and it was then that I had an MRI, and they found a four centimeter mass on my rectum. March 24th, 2015, I was officially diagnosed with stage three rectal cancer. And I thought, oh boy, here we go again. This time though, things were gonna be a little different. I was on Nergo 28 days of intensive radiation, followed by a surgery to remove my rectum and any tumors that were living inside of it, as well as to install an ileostomy bag. Then after all of that, I was supposed to go through 12 months of chemo chemotherapy every other week for six months. Everything was going as planned until August 27th, two weeks after my surgery, when I just so happened to develop a blood clot in my heart and lungs. And the doctors at the ER said, hey, had you gone to sleep that night, you would not have woken up. So September came around and I began my chemotherapy regimen. And luckily for me, one of the major side effects of the Fall Fox treatment was extreme cold sensitivity. Just what I needed in time for winter, right? During my second battle of cancer, I relied heavily on my outlook that had brought me success during my prior battle. And that was to do my very best each day and not worry about tomorrow. I decided that I'm only gonna concern myself with things that were within my control. And if I couldn't control it, I'm not gonna waste my time or energy on it. As of today, I'd like to report that I'm in remission for the second time in my life. And I have now a new slogan. And that is cancer. Thank you. So my new slogan is cancer. First time was nuts, second time was just a pain in the butt. <laughs> I hope that after hearing my story and how I decided to fight back and let cancer, and not let cancer ever win, that this will spot, inspire you all to go out and give your absolute best each and every day. Thank you all and God bless. Yeah.